Our discussion here will consider cutoff versus full cutoff ratings versus bug ratings for luminaires. This discussion really starts with a comparison of light trespass versus light pollution. Light trespass is concerned with the placement of illumination within a site and confining the output to that site rather than going on to letting it, allowing it to go on to neighboring sites. Light pollution is concerned with keeping illumination aimed downward, not allowing straight light to brighten the night's time sky. From an environmental concern, dark skies are desirable because it keeps the natural look in the environment. And certainly we like to look up into the sky and see the stars at night, which can be difficult in a downtown inner city environment. But there's also an environmental drive to achieve more efficient lighting that's involved because if we keep the light aimed down that comes out of a luminaire and not allow it to just be wasted in an upward direction, we have a more efficient fixture. It saves energy. This got a real push with the advent of computers and lighting programs, the use of which kind of reached our height during the HID uh, generation, where we analyze the output of a luminaire and understand where the light is going, all the different angles that it's coming out at, upward, downward, backward, forward, and in all directions. Non-cutoff and semi-cutoff luminaires are fairly easy to understand because they're allowing light to go everywhere and stray and, and spray all over the place. Cutoff and full cutoff luminaires have attempted to eliminate this upward light and control light to a given site. Now, cutoff luminaires are a little bit different than full cutoff in that they acknowledge a certain amount of light may come off of the luminaire in an upward direction as a result of the structure of the luminaire. For example, a post-top luminaire may have light bouncing off of its structural elements in an upward direction. Full cutoff luminaire says none of that is allowed, everything is to go straight down. And when we look at how these ratings have been developed, full cutoff and cutoff and semi-cutoff, they all relate back to the percentage of the spec output of an HID lamp. Well, what do we mean by this? Full cutoff luminaire allows no light above 90 degrees and 10% of the rated lumens in the 80 to 90 degree zone. The rated lumens relate to the actual output of the lamp that's used. So in the case of a 400 watt metal halide, it would be 40,000 lumens is the rated lumens. 250 watt metal halide would be 22,000 lumens is the rated lumens. 10% of which is either 4,000 or 2,200 depending upon which wattage is used, which wattage lamp is used. In either case, no light is above, uh, allowed above 90 degrees. In the case of a cutoff luminaire, it still has 10% of the candela or the rated lumens in the 80 to 90 degree zone, but it's allowing 2.5% of the light output to go above 90 degrees in acknowledgement of light that may bounce off of the structure of the luminaire itself or maybe even the support mechanism, say a pole or whatever the case may be. Whereas a full cutoff luminaire does not allow that at all for that definition. In the case of a semi cutoff luminaire, even more light is allowed into these other zones, 5% above 90 degrees and 20% in the 80 to 90 degree zone. Now the 5% in the upward light can be something that's less desirable, but the 20% in the 80 to 90 degree zone can come into play in order to create vertical illumination on objects moving through the illuminated field. And therefore, it's not necessarily a bad thing to have that much light up at that high angle. However, it does become more difficult to restrict the light to only the job site itself. It's possible in the case of an 80 to 90 degree zone, light can go off the site. In the case of LED, there is no lamp in the luminaire per se. And so it changed the defining metrics. There couldn't be a percentage of the rated lamp because there is no rated lamp in the luminaire. Yet, we still need to measure the output at all the vertical angles of the luminaire. And so what was done was to take and divide the zone of illumination coming from any kind of luminaire into three areas. The forward light in a downward direction, the backward light in a downward direction, and the total amount of up light. Now, LED optics are based on the total actual luminaire output, not a theoretical perfect lamp. 
To give a rating to this, we created what was called a backlight, uplight, and glare measurement. And it looks at that spherical output of a lamp and assigns forward light, backward light, and upward light, and breaks those down into various slices or vertical angles or zones that are then analyzed. And certain parameters are allowed to, or certain, certain metrics are allowed, or certain metrics are applied to allow a certain amount of light in each one of these zones in order to achieve what's called a bug rating. For example, the one you see here says B3 U0 G4. The U0 comes from the fact that there is no uplight. If you look at the bottom two numbers, the UL and the UH, there's zero light emitted in those areas, and that's what gives you a zero rating. In the case of the G4, it's measuring the light in the FH and the FVH zone and allowing a G4 rating. More on that later. Interestingly, the functional house side light, what's in the green zone here, is the most important part because that's where your foot candles on a site are generated. Yet notice that the bug rating only puts emphasis on the negative metrics. It's something to keep in mind when doing an analysis here because a bug rating doesn't tell you how good a fixture is performing or a luminaire is performing. It only tells you what it's producing in the areas where light is not desirable. So bear in mind, keeping in mind, HID looks at the spec output of a lamp, LED looks at absolute lumens. And here's an example of the analyses that have been produced over the years to compare luminaires. Looking at two luminaires that we would consider spec grade luminaires here, we see that they have 40,000 lumen lamp in them, whereas the LED source that we're going to compare does not have one. All three luminaires have type 3 distributions, relatively similar type 3 distributions. For sake of discussion, the LED luminaire has what's called a type 3 medium distribution. In each case, you'll notice that there's a measurement of the lumens per lamp, 40,000 lumens in the case of the HID, nothing in the LED source because there is no lamp, but there is a value that refers to the total luminaire output, the luminaire lumens. Now, if you look a couple, a line, line or two down below the luminaire lumens in the HID source, we see the efficiency that the luminaire has at getting light out of the luminaire. The numbers, the difference between, for example, in the first one, 40,000 lumens and 30,498 is lost light in the luminaire. It's never going to come out. If you come down further in each one of these analyses, you'll notice that there's a total luminaire watts. In the case of the HID luminaires, they're 455 watts. In the case of the LED, it's only 256 watts. And that's what makes the LED luminaire so much better as far as efficiency is concerned because all three luminaires are putting out about the same amount of total lumens, but the LED luminaire is doing it for a lot less power. Also, if we take a look at the amount of light coming out at 80 to 90 degrees, the critical area there in the analysis of cutoff and full cutoff luminaires, they're all relatively the same. They're under 10%, somewhere between 6 and 9%, with no light going above 90 degrees. But in today's parlance, what we look at is the luminaire classification system. Where we're analyzing all of the light output all the way around the luminaire. And that's where the real differences come into play because different values are now assigned to the amount of light in each of these zones. What impact does that have? Let's do a comparison between two LED luminaires. The one that we initially looked at, which has a medium distribution, and the new luminaire, which has technically a type 3 wide distribution. You notice they both have no lumens per lamp because there is no lamp there, but the total luminaire lumens are comparable, one at 29,000, one at 26,000 or 27,000. The issue that comes up within this cutoff, full cutoff classification system is down at the max candela in the 80 to 90 degree zone. What we're doing is comparing, cand comparing candelas to lumens, which really can't be done, but what it produces is a value of nearly 40% for the new luminaire in that zone versus 8.2% in the initial luminaire. And that rating causes the luminaire to now fall into a semi-cutoff classification. And that's why we can't really use the old cutoff, full cutoff 
metric in looking at LED luminaires. Because when we look down at the bottom numbers and the bug rating under the luminaire classification system, they're identical as far as the rating is concerned. Even though the wide distribution luminaire has a lot more light pushed out at higher angles in order to get better spacings and in order to create better vertical illumination amongst any objects moving through that zone. Is one better than the other? Well, really, they're just different. And that's the bottom line.